Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from sortofinteresting.com and today you are joining me on board good old narrowboat Abel's Ark for an absolutely beautiful sunset boat trip. Real time boating is finally back. This is a series that I started that is quite literally just boating in real time. Back when I was on my old narrowboat Tilly, a little 30 foot Springer a couple of years ago, but I somewhat spoiled the series when I then sold my boat and moved on to dry land for a couple of years. So you'll have to forgive me for the uh, long pause between the last episode of Real Time Boating and this one. Anyway, just a little bit of information to start with and don't worry, I'm probably not gonna sp uh, talk to you constantly for 31 minutes in this video. Um, so, where are we? We are currently passing through Whittington Wharf, formerly known as Meistermin Marina, up here on the sort of the top end of the Langothlin Canal. So, if you're familiar with places like Chirk, Chirk Aqueduct, Chirk Tunnel, and the Ponkasuffly Aqueduct, then we're a few miles downstream from there. So, very much in that region, though. And we're heading towards Ellesmere as well for another another sort of landmark for anybody who's maybe not familiar with the area. And, well, as you can see, I mean, what a beautiful stretch of canal, even here passing through the marina where we can't see past the boats on the right-hand side to properly enjoy the full Shropshire countryside. I mean, well, I suppose before we get into talking about what we're seeing, just uh, another couple of things here, just for anyone who's curious. This is being filmed in 4K video resolution, so if you've got really good internet connection, then please do uh, feel free to put those video settings right up to the top. For the rest of us, though, uh, we'll have to stick to the normal HD settings, probably. Uh, this is also filmed with a wide-angle lens, so even though you can't really tell, it has got an actual bit of a fisheye effect, and you won't be able to tell that, really, until you get to a bridge, or we get to a bridge, as <laughs> so I was the one actually there driving. And then once you've got straight lines sort of in close proximity to the camera, then you'll see that it gets a bit distorted to going through the bridges. But I've got to be honest, I'm really pleased with the way that the wide angle manages to cram a lot more of the scenery to either side of the canal into the shot. So that's something I'm very happy with rather than it being just focused on the canal ahead like my previous real-time boating videos were in years gone by. As as I say though, I, typically as I'm talking about this, we're passing through a, an online marina. I don't know if that's the real, the proper term for these marinas where it's boats moored at the side of the actual canal. But um, obviously, once we get past this and back out into the countryside, you'll be able to see a lot more of the general fields and trees and maybe a few animals here and there that are off to either side of the canal. So, I, as I say, I don't want to talk to you endlessly for 30 minutes in this video. I'll cut, the, cut myself off at some point when I've talked enough nonsense in this video. Perhaps I've already passed that point. And then we'll just have nice music for the rest of the trip. But... I suppose that I haven't really had a proper video of me just wittering away and talking at you since I bought Narrowboat Tables Ark because the initial videos are all about moving in and getting jobs done and getting settled on the boat and then the recent videos have all been proper sort of vlog style videos where I've been out like doing day in the life and this is what we did today boating up here and going to the shops through the fields and jumping over hedges and stuff and don't worry, the the rest of the boat trip that we've got up to so far in the main line of videos will be continuing very soon. In fact, the next boaty video will be a proper vlog style video again, out boating on the canal and going about daily life aboard. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. Um, but really, I just wanted to just upload this video as a real time boating video, as an uninterrupted 30 minutes of boating. I do think that's one of the things I do want to note. Uh, we're travelling up to the Frankton Basin here, which is where the Frankton Locks then drop your boat down onto the Montgomery Canal to go down towards Maysbury. But it's it's probably only about a mile and a half. I think it might be maybe just under or just over a mile and a half. And the, I'm talking almost exactly a mile and a half from the start of this video to the end of this video. And so basically we're travelling at just under three miles an hour as our average speed. 
But the thing that I wanted to mention was, I feel that the fisheye lens, I don't know if it's just in my mind or whether it's the effect of it cramming more than a normal 16 by 9 video amount of footage into that uh, 16 by 9 video uh, ratio. But I feel as if it looks like we're travelling a lot faster than I actually was. And again, I mean, the, the basic maths, I suppose, sums it up of travelling... Uh, one and a half miles in just over 30 minutes or 31 minutes it does basically say well you've literally your average speed at that point is less than three miles an hour so that was just something that's just a little side note there um talking about what we're actually seeing on the screen here as you can see loads of beautiful boats here moored up at Whittington Wharf you've got that boat on your left the work boat there that's uh, I think it's sat on the bottom of the canal actually like on the silt at the side of the canal there on the left hand side that we're passing you can see it's loaded up with a load of sand and stuff that's what you'll see the canal and river trust uh, the blue work boats going around and they'll themselves often have a load of gravel or stuff to go and work on remote parts of the towpath. And then they will also sometimes be towing boats like that that are just great big empty holes, basically. So they can load up a load of whether it's rubbish they're taking away from a site or whether it's stone, sand and grit that they're taking to a site. Maybe even bricks sometimes. I'm sure I've seen. Uh, I couldn't tell you, though. Anyway, that's all just a little distraction. You'll see as well, uh, we've just passed underneath those pylons, which that's the one shame of the canal in this area, that you've got those massive ugly pylons that cut across the fields and they cut just across the Montgomery Canal as well briefly before they luckily disappear from the canal for a very, very, very long time, especially travelling at three miles an hour. But it's an interesting thing just for me personally that... When I'd moved back onto dry land and I'd moved into my hometown of Oswestry again and I was living at the top of a beautiful old building that had been converted into flats. Don't say flats, call them apartments, please. Um, I'm not like that, that's the joke, just for anyone who's unfamiliar with my videos. Um, but when I was there, I had a little balcony in that that I could look off and I looked over the balcony in this direction. So this is at the foot of a hill known as the Brow between Whittington and Ellesmere, which I have to bike up and down every night and every morning when I'm going between Ellesmere and Marina to and from work, which is certainly a, a rude awakening in the morning, I can tell you. But it was an interesting sort of waypoint, I suppose, like a landmark where these uh, pylons cut across. And looking through a telescope, looking through a pair of binoculars from the bal balcony, you could also see a white house on the top of the brow as you were going up the hill. And so I could then, from that, work out, oh, well, flipping heck, that's where I used to moor up at the Narrowboat Inn, which is the pub that we're just passing on our right-hand side here. And uh, that road we're going over now, uh, going under, rather, over, that would be an exciting boat trip. Uh, the road we're travelling under here is the road to and from Ellesmere, so... You'll see me sometimes at ridiculous small hours of the morning or whether that's a late night or an early morning uh, bike ride can be debatable. Um, so, yeah, that's this is part of my commute and it's always nice to look over and you see the boats at the Whittington Wharf there and see them coming in and out of the water on a crane sometimes. Lovely stuff. Classic traditional canal scenery. And, well, I suppose that... The real, the real topic that I want to talk about for a few minutes in this video isn't reminiscing about land life or life on Narrowboat Tilly. It's about this actual experience of being out on the canal boating. And you can see now what's on our screen and you can see the sunlight as well because it's the setting sun behind us. You've got that orangey hint, that warm sort of glow of the su setting sunlight lighting up the right hand side of the canal. But just look at how perfectly still everything is. Look at the reflections that we've got going on in the canal water itself there. It's this experience of boating, of being stood on the tiller, travelling at three miles an hour or slower, and you're just there in the middle of all this. Nothing but nature around. It's like I only saw a couple of people on board their boats uh, during this trip. And this was a longer trip. I think it maybe went on for an hour and 20 minutes or so in total before I then moored up in an 
absolute middle of nowhere place. I'm not sure if I ever moored up in that particular place uh, when I had narrowboat Tilly. At that time, it was a middle of nowhere place. And there's just something fantastic about this. As I say, you just stood there on the tiller. You've got the engine running away beneath your feet, not literally running away from you. Um, and oh, these jokes I try and put in are just getting worse. I can only apologise. But you're surrounded by nothing but countryside, certainly on this canal, at least you are, for 98% of the canal. And it's fantastic. You might meet a heron who flies off once you've got close to it and then it'll land about three, four hundred feet down the canal and then it'll fly off again when you get close to it again. And that'll be about as much company as you have out on these trips if you're boating as a, a solo boater. And there's just something I don't know. I don't know if it's because there's nothing you can do. Like you, Even if you were trying to rush, which you shouldn't, your speed limit is four miles an hour, but realistically, a narrowboat can't really get much faster than, say, like maybe eight to ten miles an hour, maybe, which I can't explain to you would seem so ludicrously fast. And I've certainly seen some boats with a massive wake behind them, and it's extraordinary to see some of these boats travel it. What you consider as a boater and as a person who's got experience with boating on an arrowboat as an extremely fast speed. And then if you're walking in the same direction as that boat, they may actually be going faster than walking pace, which is something I don't know if I've done in all the years since I bought an arrowboat Tilly and the engine almost blew up on the first, uh, on the, the, yeah, the first time that I ever started her engine. Well, I was on the boat going boating on my own. I got a few minutes into the trip before pipes burst off the engine and steam came up through the deck boards. But that's a story that's been told many times before, including in my book, The Narrowboat Lad, available for Kindle right now. Never miss an opportunity for a shameless plug. Um, but yeah, I mean, just look at this ahead of us now. Uh, I, I much prefer it because the sun's so low. You've got this shadow and this sort of coolness almost to this bit of the trip. But I much prefer it when we've got the sunlight cast across the canal and especially with it being so low and behind us, a little bit later in this video as we start weaving around these corners, the sun will just absolutely light everything up in that beautiful golden sunlight. I just absolutely love sunrise and sunset boating is fantastic because you've got the piece of it being like out of peak traveling hours and out of just general humans being around hours i suppose i mean look at it i don't think i see a single walker or anybody out on the towpath itself in this trip and that's such a such a great feeling as i say you just stood on the back of the boat you've got your tiller there you've got the throttle every once in a while you might want to put a bit more on or take a bit off if you're going past boats but the core experience is just total peace. You're tootling along here, no speed at all. And then you might see, oh, what's this? A, a frog hopping from the side or something. That's a terrible example. I don't think I've ever seen the frog hopping while I've actively been boating. <laughs> Plenty of them around when I've been moored up. But uh, that's the basic principle, though. It's like... I struggle to actually think of an event that might happen when you're boating in these sort of rural environments because it's that tranquil and that peaceful. And that sort of my frog example being ridiculous sort of summed up the point I was trying to make that nothing really happens. And so you can imagine your mind almost has that hypnotic sort of thing of it's just you trying to keep relatively sensual in the canal ahead. The canal itself is turning into a mirror of the sky and all of the surroundings around you as well. So it's almost like some weird optical illusion. I've seen people take great photos of a really still canal like this and they flip the photo upside down so it might have a building reflected in the canal. But the way you're looking at it is as if the reflection is the upright actual building and the building itself is upside down as if it's the reflection because they're so similar. That's uh, something I've always loved photos and little almost optical illusions like that. This is a, another little place that I've liked to moor in the past where you've got this uh, 
I think this is the place. I'm sat a little way away from the computer as I'm recording this um, commentary, so I can't tell because one of the trees that used to be a good landmark here was all rotten, so it's been cut down. So it's it's made it more difficult to tell which part of the canal's which when I'm looking at these these little thumbnail images as I do this uh, voiceover. But yeah, I suppose really that's it. Really, it's like. It's just so good to be back out boating along the canal and it's something that I'd forgotten just how good it is to be out here doing just this. And the reason that it's so good is that it's just peace, it's quiet, it's calm. It lulls your mind almost into that sort of... It forces you to be peaceful almost, I would say, just through sheer... Well, what else are you going to do? You, you're not going to be racing through any white water rapids you're not going to get to your destination in a hurry even if you were trying to floor it and hurry so just enjoy the rides and sit back and relax i think that's probably a good time for me to do my shameless plugs and spoil the calm ambience of this video and then leave you with some peaceful music as the trip continues so Thanks so much for tuning in and listening to me witter on about nonsense and boating being peaceful as if nobody's ever realised that before. Um, feel free if you'd like to help me out um, to check out my short boat life books available for the Kindle and also a paperback that's a volume comprised of a few of my shorter Kindle books all in one handy paperback. Uh, you'll find links to those in the description below or go to narrowboatbooks.com and that'll take you straight to my Amazon page. Feel free as well to subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell as well. That's an important thing these days as YouTube doesn't actually show all of my videos to people who subscribe and that, which is sad times. To, uh, I don't know. But anyway, it's all fun and games. Um, so yeah, please do feel free. Subscribe if you would like. Uh, check out my other videos as I've literally got hundreds of videos from when I used to live on my narrowboat in the years gone by, narrowboat Tilly. So that was a, a totally different narrowboat life experience to the one that I'm living now. So please do check those out if you haven't already. And well, I suppose until the next time, my friends, I'll say there's social media links to Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat and Goodness knows what else all in the description below. So if you want to see photos of this sort of scenery and bike rides and walking up mountains and stuff, then feel free to add me on those. But I feel that I've spoken already for quite some time more than I intended to and probably an awful lot more than you wanted to listen to. So I'll just simply say, as always, keep it boatworthy, keep it interesting, have a fantastic day and of course, farewell.
Thank you.